Welcome to Ida and her books. I am Ida and these are my books. Today I will be reviewing Cinder by Marisa Meyer as well as talking a little bit about books in Swedish and books translated into Swedish because I have had a few thoughts about that lately. Partly because reading this book is the Swedish version and so I had some thoughts I wanted to share. But I wanted to start talking about Cinder. It's the first book in the Lunar Chronicle series and it's about Cinder who is a cyborg and um, she lives with her stepmom and stepsisters. It takes place in Beijing where she works as a mechanic and uh, one day the prince shows up at her shop asking her to fix one of his androids. Well there's a lot going on, I don't want to say much more because I feel like that would be spoilers or I like going into books kind of blind. I don't want to have too much expectations on them so I'm just gonna leave it at that. It was, it was a good read. It took me a few chapters to get into it but once I did it was really good. I liked the characters, I liked Cinder, I liked Kai, I liked a lot of the characters, I liked the story. When it got close to the ending I started to realize, I mean I knew it was a series, but I started to realize that a lot of what happens in this book carries over to the next one. And now I need to read the rest. I don't remember what score I gave it. I will put it on the screen if I, if I have given it a score. Uh, it's good. It's not one of the best I've read this year, but it's definitely very good. Because it's a series, I looked up the rest of the books and there are five books, but only three have been translated to Swedish. And this is part of the reason I want to talk about translating books and such, because the first three were translated within a year of publication in English, and the last two have not been translated yet, and it's been like three years. Which makes me think that they're not going to translate them. I, I think that's because they weren't popular enough for it to be profitable to translate them. I understand that that's how it works, but I already have this one in Swedish. <laughs> and so now I have to either change the language in the middle of a series or repurchase the first one. At least I only have one and, I, and not the first three and then realized I didn't have the rest. My sister also read this and when she got to the third one, her partner gave her for like a birthday present the full box set of all five in English so she could finish the series. I did find the box set when I was in Italy and I really wanted to buy it. It would be much too big to fit in my suitcase though, so I didn't. But that means I'm sort of stuck with this one and I really want the next one. I have some other series that also started in Swedish. I have Percy Jackson the Lightning Thief, first one. And this one I think belonged to my sister. Yeah, uh, it belonged to my sister. We've had it for more than a decade and so probably because we were young, probably because it was a present, is in Swedish. But when we were like uh, 10, 11, 12, we did read in Swedish. So series I have for so long like this one or the Harry Potter series or the Golden Compass I have in Swedish because that one I also read when I was about 10. I mean they're good but there's a problem with translating books to Swedish because you lose some nuances in the language that I feel drags the book down a bit. I also had a second Percy Jackson book in Swedish. I bought these two at the same time when I was in Stockholm and I mean it's less than two years ago I think. I don't know why I bought this one in Swedish but I bought this one in Swedish because I already had the first one. Um, and then less than a year later I decided that I wanted to start reading the original language as far as possible. And I was, now I'm stuck with them in Swedish. Um, and I haven't decided if I'm gonna repurchase them or not. But you lose some nuances in the language when translating and especially books about teenagers because it's not so straightforward to translate American or English, British slang and teenagers language to Swedish and expect it to sound good in Swedish. There are some word choices sometimes when I stop and I just I don't know what I thought when I chose those words and I'm not saying the translators didn't do a good job it's just sometimes it sounds weird and there's also a stark difference between a translated English book 
and as an actual Swedish book. I read this one recently and the language in that one, I was so immersed because it was believable. It sounded like the 16 year olds I met or it sounded like how me and my friends spoke when we were 16. And it's so natural, but a lot of that gets lost when you try to translate a book from English to Swedish. Because we don't talk the same. Uh, we don't use the same words. It just gets weird. So I have a lot of Swedish series as well. Uh, this by Sara Bergman Elkgren. And I also have a lot of books by Magnus Nolin, who also writes a lot about teenagers. His language is also so believable for teenagers, and it works so well. But then there's other parts, descriptions or outbursts of anger that don't sound natural in Swedish. It might be that I consume so much American media, both in books and TV and YouTube and such, but for someone to yell shut up in Swedish, it's so anticlimactic. It doesn't give the impact that it should, because Swedish to me is such a silly language. It's boring and it's flat and it's... Oh, I just don't like Swedish, <laughs> honestly. It also depends on what the book is about. Uh, like I said, books about teenagers are better, because the language, if it's written in Swedish, it sounds believable. For Swedish teenagers. Uh, translating teenagers is difficult. Translating adults I think is easier because things that teenagers get a lot of crap about is slang and uh, how well we don't talk like adults in a lot of ways. Teenagers and, and young adults and such. So books about adults. I have Two. I have uh, Freya by Johanne Hildebrand and Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Um, I have read both recently and I did not have as much problems with this one as I had with Cinder. And I think that has to do with the language being different. And so the translation works differently. It sounds more natural in Swedish than it did when there were teenagers talking. And then I have this one, Freya, um, which I was convinced for a very long time when I was reading it was by a Danish author uh, because of the name, but then I looked it up and it's not. This one instead was difficult to read in Swedish because it's about the uh, Norse mythology gods. And uh, so it's Freya, Freya and Thor and Loki and considering how much I love the Avengers movies, especially Thor and Loki, reading about them in Swedish as Thor and Loke, and them looking different, having different personalities, I think that threw me off as well. But overall, like I know it's... I mean, it takes place before Vikings, I think, like a long, long time ago. And I realized that Thor and Loke and Frey and Freya and all of those, I mean, it's part of Swedish history more than it's part of Marvel. And um, it was weird reading about it <laughs> in Swedish because I'm so used to the American names. <laughs> it's just weird. But also at some point in this book, which is originally in Swedish, uh, descriptive language works perfectly, but dialogue sounds weird. It might have to do with it taking place 2,700 years ago, and so we don't speak the way we do now. Um, but it sounds... It sounds to me as if you were to take... Well, sort of like the dialogue and language from like Pride and Prejudice, if you think like 17th, 18th, 19th century England, and then you translate that to Swedish which gets very, uh, you sound very uptight and very, um, it doesn't sound natural, especially not with today's ears. <laughs> it's so weird to read that in Swedish. When it's written in Swedish originally, that is what's so weird. I mean, I don't mind reading in Swedish, 
that's not the problem. The problem is these ones that I think would do so much better in English because it's the original language. I always think the original language is better, but I don't speak enough languages to read modern Swedish and English. At least they stuff with a weird habit they had when translating the Lord of the Rings series the first time. Uh, when they translated names. And so, for example, that the Shire uh, is instead called Filke. And some other places and uh, names have been changed. That is something they stopped doing. I don't know how long ago, but quite a while ago. So by the time, for example, the Harry Potter books came out, they didn't translate the names. Which was good. That is something that does make it easier to read translated works. But still, I recently, like the past year or two, I have listened to all the Harry Potter books on audiobook in English. And oh my god, they're so much better than when I read them last in Swedish. They're just so different in language and feeling and it did help that Stephen Fry was reading. And uh, well, he does a very good job with that. I do have a lot of books in Swedish that I would have preferred to read in English. Nowadays, the only time I go to the Swedish shelf in bookstores is to find, for example, Magnus Nordin or Sara Bermak Öpken. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I go straight to the English section, straight to the fantasy. I do understand why you translate books, even for young adults and such, because even though in Sweden, you have English as a subject in school from eight years old. A lot of people are not comfortable reading in English, especially not when it comes to fantasy, high fantasy, where even when I read them now, I've been reading fantasy for years, I come across some words when I, when I, I just don't understand what it means. Some words when I, I, I'm like, I don't know if they made this up for this book or if it's an actual English word. And I have no idea what it means. <laughs> Or I was talking to my friend about the book where they have Fae and I asked her, do you know what Fae is? And she's like, no. And I'm and I was gonna explain. I say it is I don't know what it is. It's like I have it I I I understand like the concept, but trying to explain in Swedish what a Fae is was weird. So had I read that book in Swedish, I wouldn't easily been able to explain what a Fae was. I think the closest word we have in Swedish is the equivalent to fairy, and that's not the same thing. It's, it's, it's weird. So I understand why they translate books. And, but the problem is then when they stop translating in the middle of a series. Another example, manga series, Shaman King. I have the first nine in Swedish. And then I read somewhere that they were gonna stop translating it. So now I have the first nine in a series that I either have to repurchase all of them or switch language in the middle of it. These are also so old. I bought these, I started this series when I was like 13 and that was also before I started reading in English completely. I preferred Swedish in some aspects, but even here I I would prefer them in English even though I know the original is Japanese. I cannot read that much Japanese. I feel like some, some things get lost in translation. <laughs> As like nuances in language or there's, for example, this is not from a book, it's from Doctor Who, the TV, TV series. The episode, I can't recall the name, but it's David Tennant and Donna, and they're in the library with the shadows. And uh, the robots or androids or what, whatever, they say the, the people have been saved. Because save can both mean save like in the computer file, or save, as in, I saved you from danger. In Swedish, those are two different words. So in the Swedish subtitles, it says explicitly saved, as in, save a computer file. Which I, I read that and I was like, oh, okay. 
I already know what's going on. It removed some of the tension <laughs> because it was translated. Um, I stopped watching with Swedish subtitles <laughs> as well. Some books I haven't really decided what language I want to read it in. Because, for example, I did read uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame in Swedish, I think, in high school. But that was in French, originally. I don't speak French either. Um, but that is also the kind of text I think would do better in English than Swedish, honestly. If I were to read another French text, I would prefer to read it in English. Just because I prefer reading in English doesn't mean I want these ones to get translated just so I can read them in English. Like I said, I do prefer dialogue uh, among teenagers in Swedish. It was written originally in Swedish. This is a good book, by the way, I'm rereading it. I just had some thoughts I wanted to share. I think that's all I had to say. I have read books in English since, since I was like 14 or 15. Not all books, but some things I did. Manga series, I started reading English uh, around that time. And uh, I started hanging out a lot at the English section of the library. And so I started reading a lot of English back then. And I just, I think it's, the original language is often better, I think. That's, I think that's what I wanted to say. And also complain about my horrible, horrible mistake of buying these in Swedish <laughs> instead of English. Now I, I have nothing more to say, I'm just repeating myself. So uh, I'm just gonna uh, end the video here. Um, Thank you so much for watching, uh, please subscribe, maybe hit the like button. Um, I have an Instagram if you want to follow me there. Um, yeah. Yeah, bye.